Hi, my name is Samantha Stark. I'm going to be doing my case presentation on IS, who is a 75-year-old male with Parkinson's disease characterized by moderate dysarthria, dysphonia, and dysphagia. He developed Parkinson's in 2015 and has been receiving outpatient rehabilitation services since October. Parkinson's is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder caused by nerve damage in the substantia nigra, the area of the brain that controls voluntary movement and regulates mood. The nerve damage impairs the cell's ability to produce and deliver dopamine to control movements of the body. Without enough dopamine, the patient will experience tremor, rigidity, bradykinesia, and impaired balance and coordination. There are also changes to speech and swallowing that are very common in Parkinson's and impact the quality of life. Parkinson's cannot be cured, but medications can control symptoms. Commonly prescribed um, medications include carpidopa levodopa, which changes the dopamine in the brain to control those movement symptoms. If a patient doesn't respond well to medications, deep brain stimulation surgery may be considered if the patient is found to be a good candidate. Um, my patient was having an exhausting list of medications. He wasn't finding any benefit. However, the surgery has a risk for potentially developing or worsening dysarthria and dysphagia. In this case, my patient was not found to be a good candidate in terms of speech. However, he felt like the benefits of the surgery outweighed the risk. So he did undergo the surgery in January. Unfortunately, his speech and swallowing have worsened and he did develop a dyskinesia in the right leg. So right now he's working diligently with his doctors on programming to find the most optimal setting. As speech pathologists, it's really important that we educate our patients on these risk factors. The evaluation and assessment process includes gathering a motor speech examination, so gathering max phonation time, DDKs, acoustic voice measurements, perceptual voice measurements, intelligibility, intelligibility ratings, oral mech exams. Um, we also did a clinical swallow evaluation and provided self-reported outcome measurements for the patient to fill out. By gathering all of this baseline information on different aspects of the speech of the patient's speech and swallowing, we are able to identify any impairments, provide education, and develop treatment approaches that can help improve the patient's quality of life. He has already been previously known to speech services prior to DBS and had very impaired speech with a lot of hypokinetic characteristics, so mono pitch, mono loud, reduced overall loudness, short rushes of speech, very short phrases, variable rate and increased rate usually, um, imprecise consonants, and dysphonia. So some of the speech and voice goals that we had for him were developed by the Lee Silverman voice treatment. So for an example, the patient will reach 70 dB in, independently for longer, more complex paragraph level reading to help him increase vocal respiratory support to be understood without the need for repetition. Swallowing changes, like I said, are very common, and he already presented with swallowing concerns prior to DBS. After DBS, it exacerbated, so he underwent another MBS, and the findings presented with a mild to moderate oral pharyngeal dysphagia, characterized primarily by incomplete laryngeal vestibular closure and impaired epiglottic inversion, resulting in aspiration and vents. So recommendations include chopping the solids, using nectar thickened liquids during meals, single sips and alternating between solids and liquids, and also continuing with our SLP outpatient services. Our goals for him were to independently complete swallowing exercises with 80% accuracy to improve pharyngeal swallowing function and reduce the risk of aspiration. We also had a compensatory swallowing strategy that included the supraglottic swallow to really help with that airway protection. The exercises that we had him do were the chin tuck against resistance, effortful swallow, and the Misako maneuver to really help with that closure, strengthening those um, laryngeal muscles, and help with that tongue-based retraction in order to push the food down and really protect his airway. 
Some special considerations include that he was previously known to services and this did have, you know, the risk of developing worsening of his speech and swallowing concerns. So really being educated on that as professionals, but also educating our patients who are going or thinking about doing this surgery. Providing ongoing education is just super important and we really need to be better at understanding all of the risk for different surgeries that are available for patients with Parkinson's disease. Um, another consideration includes counseling. So my patient was very frustrated after this process because it was supposed to help him and unfortunately it made his symptoms a lot worse and he developed another symptom of dyskinesia. So being a really good counselor, using active listening skills, and helping him understand that this is a process and to be patient and knowing that the programming can take up to six months sometimes to find the most optimal setting. So really keeping in touch with his doctors, staying on um, topic with his settings and knowing which settings he's on and which settings work best for his speech versus which settings work best for his tremor. Um, overall, this was a really interesting case, but I wanted to share because we really need to know the different aspects of deep brain stimulation and knowing that if their goal is to improve speech or swallowing, this is not what DBS does. There is no research that indicates that DBS helps speech or swallowing. It only is effective for tremor. Thank you.